Good morning, fellow programmers. Thanks for joining me, I'm T Pain, and welcome to Let's Learn Python. Feel free to use the skip ahead feature on the right hand side to jump to any specific section or the examples. Today we'll be using Python 2.7.4. You can download it from python.org slash get it. Today's focus will be on overriding variables and functions and organizing your files. This is part two of the object oriented series. This will build heavily on past lessons, so feel free to go back and watch past episodes if anything is unclear. All right, so overriding variables, what is this? The replacement of puny variables. <laughs> Terrible joke. When a variable is established in a base class, it can be overridden in inheriting classes. Note that they must be the exact same name. If there is any capitalizations that's different, a different variable will be created. All right, so let's go ahead and start in the, with an example. Let's crack open idle. All right, so first things first, let's go ahead and save this file on our desktop. It's going to be called overriding example.py. So first we're going to create a base class. So type class, base class. It's going to inherit from Python's object, colon, enter. And then we're going to create the constructor. So type def, underscore, underscore, init, underscore, underscore, open parentheses, self, close parentheses, colon, enter. And then we're just going to create a simple uh, variable uh, called self.x is equal to 10. And we've got our simple base class created. Now we're going to go ahead and create an inheriting class. So we're going to type class in class because I'm lazy and then base class the class that we're inheriting from and then we're going to create its constructor so def underscore underscore init underscore underscore open parentheses self close parentheses colon enter and then we're going to initialize the base classes um, init function so we're going to type super type the class we are currently in comma self close parentheses dot underscore underscore init underscore underscore open close parentheses and it's called all right, so after this function, we're going to type self.x is equal to 20. Enter. All right, and now we're going to unindent all the way back down and create an instance of the cl this class by typing i equals in class, open close parentheses, and then type print i.x and save. Now let's see what happens. I'm going to go ahead and shrink this window down a little bit so we can see this in action. Once I run it, it prints out 20. Now, why does this happen? The base class created that self.x um, and set it equal to 10. And then in our inheriting class, we redefined that variable as 20. So it overrode the past value, which is exactly what we wanted. So what's the benefit of doing this? We hate puny variables. <laughs> okay, terrible joke. It's to ensure that all inheriting classes from base class will have this variable self.x. So if we were to call this in another function and it's, we didn't overwrite it, it would default to 10. Otherwise, we have the choice to overwrite it to whatever value we want. It's just to make sure that our program does not crash when we call this variable. All right, so let's try another example by creating a test function within both of these classes. So I'm just going to select the constructor of the base class and then type def test open parentheses self close parentheses colon enter and then just type print uh, and then ham just our code to uh, function. In the inheriting class we're going to do the exact same thing test self and then after defining the function we're going to type print quotation marks hammer time in quotations save and now we're going to go ahead and call that function i dot test open close parentheses save run boom hammer time printed out perfect that's exactly what we wanted so what did we just do we created a function in the base class and then overrode it by creating the function with the same name and same parameters in the inheriting class perfect all right so now i want to talk a little bit about separating your files out why do this well, as I said before in a past lesson, um, you don't want to spend forever scrolling up and down uh, thousands of lines of code. It'll be difficult for yourself and other programmers to edit. So TPN, when should I separate my files? Well, I'll tell you. The base class, like such as what we created here, should be in a separate file, should always be in its own file. The reason being is as we uh, expand our library and create classes over and over again, we may need to access this base file. Now, as you create multiple base classes, like uh, say you were to create one for uh, environment art, or you were to one, create one for characters, or collision detection, or whatever it may be, you may be tempted to combine them all into a single file. I would not recommend that, however. I would strongly recommend keeping them separate. Other than the base files, it's all up to you. 
The reason being is as the files fan out, all that matters is that they need to come back together. Here's the system that works best for me. Uh, this is just what I use. You don't have to use it. The first thing is I always have a utilities file, which I use as a file for any tools or functions that I'm going to use throughout the whole program. Example of some utilities would be like creating uh, vector2, vector3, and vector4 classes, or creating a Bezier functions, or whatever it may be. Other files that I tend to separate out, and I would strongly recommend separating out, would be files focused around physics, collision detection, game functionality, artificial intelligence, the player, input, graphics, and then the main file itself. In the end though, all that really matters is that all files connect back to your main.py file. Another function that you may want to know about is a function that accesses subclasses from the base class. Let's go ahead and try uh, type this in real quick. I'm just going to delete these last two lines of code and type in base class dot underscore underscore subclasses underscore underscore open close parentheses and I'm going to start that off with a print at the beginning. Save and run that. Beautiful. So what it prints out is that there is one inheriting class and it's called in class and that's exactly what we'd, we'd expect. So this is a way that you can figure out exactly what classes are inheriting from your base class. Very useful. All right, thank you so much for watching. Great job keeping up. Take a few minutes to investigate this final challenge as it really has some thought provoking concepts in it. Please leave me a comment below if this helped you and please do me a huge favor and subscribe to my channel. It would really mean a lot to me. Thank you so much for your support and keep the dream alive.